Okay, guys, back again. Um, this one I'm just going to have a little bit of a spill and give you an idea, um, some ideas to go fishing still. Um, at the moment, it's the snapper season, or this, it's closure just started. And I don't know how many people are whinging, I'm not going to go offshore, I'm not going to do this, can't catch snapper, I can't catch it, you know, what's the point of going offshore if I can't catch snapper? You know, well, there are plenty of other fish offshore, right? Um, and other people are saying, what am I going to do? I can't go float line, I can't use plastics to snap up once again. There's plenty of other fish offshore. There's so much things you can do. It's fishing. Go out and experiment. Try different things. What's fishing all about? You don't have to go out and do the same old thing over and over again. Well, there's a fun in that. So what I was going to do today, guys, after that little spit, <laughs> I'm just going to show you something a little bit different. Um, what I'm about to show you, some guys are going to say, oh crap, you're showing me something to go chase snapper. Yes, it does work for snapper, but it also works for a large variety of species. And I'm going to tell you something else. A lot of people don't, most people don't do this inshore. You can do it inshore, you can do it offshore. Just got to change what you're going to be towing. You can catch anywhere from flathead to jewfish, tailor to valley inshore, go offshore. You'll catch snapper, yes, but you'll also jewies if you're in the right spot, right lures. Uh, cobia, this tuna, there's also all sorts of things. It doesn't have to be snapper. So we've got beautiful weather now. It's been beautiful. It's going to turn to crap, I think, next week. But it's been beautiful and everyone's whinging. I oh, can't go offshore, can't catch snapper. Chase something else. Seriously. <laughs> Just go do something else. It's fishing. It's meant to be fun. Go experiment. <coughs> all right. So what I'm going to do, we're going to get into it. I know most of you guys, not everyone, but most of you guys have got one of these sitting in the shed. Okay, you all know what that is. You all know what that is. And most of you guys are sitting in the shed collecting dust because it's not summer, it's not mackerel season. So you put it away over winter. I don't know why. Yes, they work very well in summer for mackerel and you're towing your dead baits and your live baits. All great. Why don't you do it in winter? Why don't you get out there and do it in winter? Do it around the big bait schools or in close now in the wild. Cobia will definitely smash it. It's a good way to find cobia. Cover some ground to find cobia. Once again, yes, you'll probably pick up a snapper or two. Snapper will respond very well to it as well. Good fun. Bit of a fight. Let it go. Hopefully you know it's a snapper so you can bring it up slowly. Um, you'll get Jewies doing it. Okay. Uh, and this is the main thing I was going to say. Um, if the weather turns nasty like it is next week, still get your downrigger out. Try something different. Go on the pin bar. Go on the seaway. And trawl lures, slow trawl lures around in the pin bar and the seaway for trevally, tailor, flathead, um, school jew, jewfish, all sorts. Okay. All you're going to need for towing around with your downrigger, blow the dust off it, take it out, have some fun. All you're going to need is like an 8 to 10 pound ball, okay, which I've got there, that's an 8 pounder. And lures with small bibs, so they, have, they haven't got a lot of drag. You don't want big bib lures because it's too much drag. They're going to keep on pulling out of you a little clip here, okay? Hopefully you can see that. They're going to keep on pulling out of your clip, no matter what size clip you got. With the big bibs, too much drag, they're just going to pull out. So you just want a small bib. And these things, set them once again about 20 metres behind the ball, 20 metres back. A couple of metres off the bottom, slow trawl around the pin bar and the seaway. You'd be surprised on what you'll catch. Don't do it around the pipe, you'll probably hook the pipe and lose your ball. But out further, or in closer away break, and the pin bar's a really good one. Uh, but I'll run about four metres off the bottom because there are some good snags in the pin bar. But good way to find some big flat air, good way to find trally, all sorts of things. School Jew. See, so, nice little lures like these. Like, these are my flat air lures. I use these in the flat, so you know flat air eat them. So troll them behind a downrigger. And you know tail and trally are something going to smash them. Like all that little thing, little chrome thing. Just troll that 20 metres back. You'd be surprised on what you'll hook, and it'll get you out fishing. You don't have to row that, you know, snapper and close season. Yes, it is a pain, but there are plenty of other things to do. Go out and experiment, have some fun. Um, even offshore, like offshore this time of year, don't worry about the snapper. Pull out some of your old lures you probably bought in the past and they look great and you haven't used them, you can't work out. Like I bought this in Rapala a couple of years ago and I thought it looked good. I have no idea what the bloody do with it. So I thought... If you've got something like this, look at action on that. Slow trawl behind a downrigger offshore around bait balls and over the reef, like five metres off the reef. This thing's going to have a big wide action, big slow trawl. 
something like that. Kobe would smash that. Julie's would smash that. Snapper would have a go at it. Probably even tuna. You just don't know. Even something like this. Look at that thing. Small bib. Nice and big. And if you are trawling lures like this, I'd probably go up to a 10 pound ball because you're going to go a little bit faster. You won't be trawling around 5 to 7 k's. So go up to about a 10 pound ball and you can trawl things like this. And I'll get a nice shimmy going and put them about 5 meters off the bottom and trawl up and down the 24s. Trawl the 36s. You just don't know what you're going to hook. Yes, I know um, fuel is expensive, but you want to go out and go fish and enjoy yourself. Get out in the water. Try something different. Just go. Just do different things. Don't be boring and have to, you know, do the same thing day in, day out. Where's a funny that? Um, the other thing you can do, inshore and offshore, mainly offshore, you like your swim baits. You've got small ones here. You can buy big ones. Troll swim baits a few metres off the bottom. You'd be surprised on what it'll have a crack on offshore. Okay, and once again, it's a great way to find some big cobia because they are around this time of year. There's plenty of them around. Uh, they fight well, they're fun to catch, and they're fantastic eating. Go have a crack at them. Uh, having a bit of a spill today, eh? <laughs> but guys, it just you just got to think of something different to do. Just go try some different things. Don't sit at home and winch and I can't go because, you know, snap a closure. Sick of hearing it, actually. Um... Once again, same as like you do in summertime, trolling live and dead baits. But not so much, you can do your dead baits. Um, instead of making the rigs out of wire, make them out of mono, same rigs, just make them out of mono, mono not wire. You know, or if you're gonna troll live baits, just get yourself an inline hook, like a Gamma Gatsu, so that's an SL12 or something like that. And just put it through the nose, slow troll live baits, 20 meters behind the ball, just off the bottom. You'd be surprised on what you'll pick up. And here's something most people don't know and won't do. Troll live baits at night time. If fishing at night time is quiet and you know, slowed right down, you're sitting on your spot, not much happening, put a livey out, get your downrigger out, or two downriggers out, put two liveys out, and just go for a slow troll across the reef at night time. You'd be surprised. Um, once again, sorry, snapper, but after the snapper closure, jewfish, definitely, cobia, definitely, um, even yellowfin. Don't mind a chew on a live bait at night time. Slow to troll around at night time. Just mix things up, guys. Give it a give it a crack. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, just a little bit of a spill. But I just want you guys to get out and try something different, eh? Troll some lures, troll some baits, in close, in the river mouths, like in the seaway, in the pin bar, in the deeper channels, in the broad water. It doesn't matter. Just try something different. Um, even if you're in the seaway, I've talked about this before on the pin bar and the current is absolutely racing, and I mean racing, you can't fish it. Use your downrigger. Anchor off where you want to fish. Um, have a rough idea where you are, like anchor, if you want to fish the pipe here, so you anchor up here. Have like a 20 or 30 metre leader from your live bait back to your downrigger ball. Okay, drop your downrigger down, uh, ball down, and sit there at anchor, and you have your baits back towards the pipe or wherever you want to fish in high currents. Use a downrigger that way for fishing. And if you hook a Julia or a Julia grabs your bait, he pulls out of the clip, and then it says you on the fish. The downrigger stays there. It's a great way to you know, chase big jewfish or small jewfish, any jewfish and stuff, in high current. Because most people won't fish high current to see way in the pin bar. Use a downrigger. Sit there and anchor. Have the downriggers as your weight system. Then it won't matter how fast the current is. Put a livey down or a dead bait or whatever. Make sure it's not spinning, obviously, in the current, swimming. Or just you know flapping, not spinning and use your downriggers as the weight. It won't matter, the current won't matter. If you're up on the reef and high current is a downrigger, it doesn't matter, same deal. There's just so many things you can do with the downriggers. Um, just don't leave them in the shed over winter collecting dust, like that one has been, but I've got an excuse. I haven't got a boat, so. <laughs> um, so guys, yep, all I'm saying is get off your asses. Don't worry about the snapper closure. Go do something different, practice, have a bit of fun. See what, you, what you'll catch. You might just be surprised. You might actually enjoy it. And just do something different. Don't sit at home whinging, all right? Don't want to hear it anymore. Get off your asses, go fishing. And I think that'll do for that video, guys. I'll, I'll see you again next week. Hopefully I'll feel better. <laughs> see you then.